I want to say good evening to everybody. Welcome to the West Cliff Drainage Sewer and Water Improvements Project Public Meeting. Uh, just a really uh, a quick, a few quick notes. One is that we are going to be, we are recording this meeting. And after the meeting is uh, over, we are going to post it on the city website so it could be listened to later. Everyone is going to be started off as muted and also the videos are going to be turned off. Our goal is to kind of keep an orderly meeting and with this being a uh, WebEx meeting, we just, we just felt that was the best way to kind of keep control of the meeting is to start everybody off as being muted. At the end of the meeting, we will be taking uh, questions and so at that point in time, we can start unmuting people. The uh, for those that have that are online, if you would, there's a on this slide. You'll notice there is a chat button next to the. I guess it's highlighted in blue. And if you would type your questions in that, if you are on via phone, then that's going to be a little more challenging for us. But at the end, we'll unmute, unmute the phones of people that are online and we'll do our best to take questions from the uh, callers. Let's see. My name is Mike Bennett. I am the project manager for the West Cliff project. I do have an assistant project manager, Dylan Johns, who is going to take you through the slideshow and presentation. At the end of it, again, we will come back and respond to questions. Dylan, do you want to take over? Yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, get the presentation started. Um, so Mike has already introduced us. Um, I'm the assistant project manager for the drainage and sanitary sewer project. Um, to go ahead and jump right into it, a little bit of background on why we're doing this project. Um, we have had some uh, issues with flooding uh, in this area, as you can see in the picture on the left there, that was taken in June on June 28th, 2004. Um, the flooding is in part due to undersized drainage pipes, and that's what we, uh, the stormwater aspect of this project that we plan to address. And, um, and since this is a combined project with stormwater, water and sanitary sewer, um, the water pipes and sanitary sewer pipes are outdated and undersized and due for rehabilitation or uh, replacement. Um, this phase of the project will be the final phase um, of a multi-phase project. Um, so this should be it, uh, you know, related to this project in the neighborhood. Um, a little bit of a project overview right here. These are all the streets we will be working on. Um, there is stormwater work on Suffolk Drive that is highlighted in red, if you can see the map. Um, there's also gonna be stormwater on Anita Avenue, Manderley Place, and Trail Lake Drive. Um, Everything in blue and green is going to be uh, water and sanitary sewer, respectively. Um, there is some water on Suffolk Drive, Manderley Place, and Lake Drive, as well as Seminary Drive, Anita Avenue, and Winfield Avenue. Um, we are also doing sanitary sewer work on Manderley Place, Anita Avenue, Winfield Avenue, South Drive, and Seminary Drive. Um, uh, here's our overview of the project for the stormwater portion. Um, the different phases are highlighted. As you can see, this phase that we're working on right now is phase one. Phase 2A has already been constructed. It's complete and in the ground. Phase 2B is currently under construction. So um, some more information on uh, project details. Um, this is just kind of reiterating what was on the uh, map two slides before. The stormwater aspect is upsizing the existing 
storm drain system on Trail Lake Drive, Manderley Place, Anita Avenue, and Suffolk Drive. Uh, the water line upsizing is happening on Seminary Drive, Anita Avenue, and Winfield Avenue. And then the sanitary sewer work is happening on uh, Trail Lake Drive, Seminary Drive, South Drive, Anita Avenue, Winfield Avenue, and Carolyn Road. Um, one part of this that we wanted to highlight was the outfall of the stormwater project. We will be out the uh, new storm drain pipe will outfall into the existing channel along Trail Lake Drive in between Encanto and Windale. Um, we will be adding a significantly larger pipe. Um, if you can see the screen uh, on the bottom bottom left of that detail, um, you can see uh, that new large box there on the left that I'm kind of circling with my mouse cursor is the new pipe that we will be installing. This arch pipe here on the right is the existing pipe, which will also be remaining in place. Um, to help protect the channel banks from erosion, we plan to install a large rock riprap in the channel there at the outfall. The area where the riprap will be installed is this area uh, that I'm circling with my mouse right here. It's outlined in black. And um, the large rock riprap, as I said, is uh, just to protect the channel banks from erosion and dissipate the energy from the water with um, the new larger pipe that will be outfalling there. So the current status of the project, we are still under design. We have completed our 90% design. So we are almost finished with that phase of the project. Um, we are scheduled to finish our design in August. So next month, and then we plan to begin construction in the first quarter, first quarter of 2021, which would be January to March. And we, uh, expect construction to last about 18 months. So that would put us finishing construction um, during the summer of 2022. Um, a little bit of road closure information for this project. There will be some partial and full road closures. They will all be temporary. Uh, so they will only last for the duration of construction. And those closures will be happening on every street that is affected uh, by construction. So all of those streets that I named uh, previously. Um, and all residents who will be affected by those road closures will receive advanced notice uh, with, uh, with all the details that um, will be relevant to the road closure information about when to expect it, how long it will last, and um, all of those things. Um, so now I guess we will open well, up to questions, unless Mike, you had something else that you wanted to add. Yeah, I, I do want to add uh, one little thing, because we did have a couple participants join in a little bit after we got started. So I do want to hit on a couple of the initial statements. Number one is the fact that we are recording tonight's meeting. So if you missed the first little bit, we will uh, get that information out to the to the residents and we posted on the city website and we will help get that addressed to you so you can catch some of that uh, original that first material if you came in late. I also want to acknowledge council member uh, Ann Zeta has joined the meeting. So I just want to make sure that people are aware of that. The uh, again, my name is Mike Bennett. I am the project manager for the project. The uh, Dylan Johns is the assistant project. He just took you through the slideshow. So hopefully that catches some of the people I think that came in a little bit after our first couple slides. At this point in time, I we've got uh, quite a few participants on here. Now everybody is muted. And there are, let me see here, we go through the chat, see if anybody has posted any chat. Let's see. 
Yes, all right. So I want to make something clear here because one of our communications guy caught something that may have uh, not come off right. As far as any temporary closures, it did kind of sound like uh, we were saying they're going to be closed for the length of the project. That's not, a, that's not what is happening. We will have temporary closures that will occur for short durations of time. Uh, there will no, not one single road will be closed for the entirety of the project. There will, the closures will be, will occur. There will be a closure and then it'll be open during the project. So, of course, at this point in time, we cannot state exactly what those dates are that will be developed as we have the contractor on board and as the contractor makes his plan for constructing the project. Let's see how the sewage place is trailed so the drive not in the street. All right, so we have a question from Miss Sally McCoy. How is a sewer sewage replacement parallel to Suffolk Drive, but not in the street, going to be accessed? Dylan, can you bring up the drawing that shows the different this one. zoom in there? Yes, sir. Good job. Um, Let's see, Sally, I believe if you're talking about something that is off the street, that you would be referencing this piece of sewer between the Avenue and Trail Lake Drive, just north of Suffolk. Okay, yes, I see your uh, chat there. Um, so that sewer replacement uh, will be done. There is currently a sewer line back there. However, I do believe that that kind of replacement will be done through trenchless methods. They will not be digging up the entire length of pipe. Um, they will access it from the ends and basically run a new pipe inside of the old one. Um, Mike, I don't know. Can you help yes. us a little bit? Absolutely. Dylan Sorry. is correct. The backyards, they are a little bit more challenging for the city. That's a lot of times you'll uh, what happens is we try and move those to the front yards and into the street when when that is a possibility that is not always a possibility so when we have them in the backyards we do run some we do a trenchless method now then that does not cover the services so the contractor will have to dig up and reconnect the services to that line the contractor will get with the residents prior to this work starting so the contractors are really good they've been doing it doing this for a while so they'll get with the residents to let them know when it's happening and how exactly it will affect you i'm hoping that will answer your question if not please please let us know if there's some additional questions you might have okay great now we also have a question from a i think that's a carol or uh caraway the short answer segment sewer between porto and suffolk properties entails what exactly will you be tearing up our yards how will you access that work i believe is that the same segment i think dylan um i believe so but i'm i don't know if corto is the street immediately to the north of here or not all right, I've got a thing on. Yes, it is. I've got a map up on my computer. Yes, that's that is. So hopefully that answered that question. Please, Caraway, if you have an additional question, please type it because we are getting your getting your question. Let's see here. I'm gonna. Does anybody else use using the chat function? have any okay great looks like we got that one does is there anybody else on the computer all right not seeing anything so now then i guess the next say okay here we go from chuck nixon will sewer and backyard be abandoned All right, so that would be there are Dylan, correct me if I'm wrong. There was the water department does have some sewer in their back in a couple of these backyards that they're moving to the front, correct? And therefore, 
if we are moving the sewer from the backyard to the front, any sewer in the backyard, yes, would be abandoned. Dylan, we do have one of those, correct? Um, yes, we have at least one. I know that there is a sewer line right here yeah. to the uh, west of Anita that they are moving into the street. And then I think there is one on the north of Sim yeah, that's moving into the street. Those yeah, are the only two I'm aware of. Um, yeah. Those were the, those are the ones that I was that I felt was were in there as well. So the, the question, the answer would be yes, it would be abandoned. We do not leave the manholes in the yards. The manholes would be removed. Let's see, parking. What are parking option situations during this project? That is uh, okay. So, what are parking options situations during this project? That is a really, really good question because I know there's um, that's going to be impacted twice uh, for many people, and the two times it'll be when one first time will be when the utilities are being installed, um, especially along the storm the storm drain route, because they're typically what is ha what I've seen. The, how the contractors have worked. They've got one excavator that digs a hole. Then they have another excavator that puts the storm drain pipe into the hole. And then once it puts it into the hole, it covers the hole up. So you have two of those things working back to back in a hole that basically moves along the path of the storm drain line. And it, it's kind of like a little bitty train. And that train can be about 50 feet long. And during when they're next to your house, there will be no uh, entrance and exit at that at that time. Now that they move very quickly, so the contractors are really good at this, and they're also really good at notifying you when this will when that will happen, when they will be in front of your house and there will be challenge to the driveway. The other time that it happens is when the asphalt streets are redone because these these are asphalt streets, and after the all the utilities are complete. We will come back and install the redo the paving. And of course, there's a couple hours there where the contractor will need every let everybody know that you, you shouldn't be driving on the pavement while he's doing that work. So um, the contractors again will provide notification that this has occurred to help you get out of the you know get your car out of the driveway and place where it needs to be so you can. Go about your business and not be stuck, in essence. Let's see here. Hopefully that answers that. Let me see. We're getting all right. So we're really getting some uh good questions here. I'll make sure I gotta scroll up so I capture all of these. I really don't want to miss anything. So let me see. It goes along here. What are parking options? Okay. Do we have timing for any of any of these? changes yet we have timing i guess i'm not understanding that is question is that, so mike i'm if that is a question about when we plan to start construction we plan to start construction in january to march of 2021 and it'll take about 18 months I'm I'm not sure if that's what you're asking or not. Uh, so Mr. please send a follow up if you need uh yeah. clarification on that. Mr. Hughes, yes, please. Mr. Hughes, that was if you could follow up with that. Um let's see, when the sewer is moved from the rear of the property to the front, what is the process for connecting the house to the new service? Um basically it's on to the it's on the contractors uh to make that connection. We do not put that onto the resident. So the again, the contractor will be knocking on your door and getting with you on the timing of that when they and they will work from the back of your property and align it and get it moved to the front. It's all on them. There will be uh they will do their best to make it as least intrusive as possible. But of course, you know, a lot of just depending on the situation, there's uh, there's a lot of different things that could come up. Um, but it is the, on the contractor to make that connection. Please let me know 
if you have any additional questions on that, I think that was Miss Garnett. Let's see. Okay, let me see. Next one for Mr. Nixon. I want to note a concern I have raised directly to the city staff. I am concerned about a major outfall of water directly adjacent to public walk bike path. I have requested staff consider mitigation. Also concern regarding the aesthetics of the outfall to ensure we don't have a project that looks out of place in a residential neighborhood. I want to be sure the council member Zeta is aware of this concern. Uh, absolutely, Mr. Nixon, you're not the only one asking this uh, question. So this is something that we are we are taking a strong look at. Our desire is not to come in and create an eyesore. That that is not our goal. Our goal is to reduce flooding risk, but also make sure that we may do our best to maintain the aesthetic and context that is there. So we do we are working right now to see it. Our design is not complete, so we are working with residents that are just adjacent to the to the channel to get their get their opinions on it. And we're certainly willing to listen to anybody that has an opinion on it. The it is the drainage that we are working with. It is not we are not putting new flow in this in this basin. This is water that was getting there initially. It's just the fact that it was previously backing up into lots and into streets. And so our goal is to get it to the creek more efficiently. So it's not that the creek is receiving any more water. I was also want to note that we are our team is working with the floodplain development group that maintains the uh, the floodplain information for the city. To make sure that we are not negatively impacting the uh, or doing anything that we're not supposed to be that we shouldn't be doing in this in this floodplain area, we are also coordinating with parks because that is a this area that we're out falling into is their park property. So we are also coordinating with the park property. Our goal in the outfall is to make it as natural as possible. The what we're talking about as far as the riprap is basically our goal right now. Or one of the things we're looking at is what we refer to as loose rock riprap. So it's just large rock placed within the channel that acts as a way to reduce the energy that's coming out of those storm drain pipes. And it's the goal is to protect the the side slope so there is it limits the amount of er, the er, erosion that will occur. The we are looking at there is a lot of good screening that's already out there naturally and are we are not going in there and clear cutting everything. I want to make sure that that's that's understood. There's a lot of vegetation that's already there. Our goal is to keep as much there as we possibly can. So that that is another thing that we're going to take a look at. And it's also what we're working with parks on to help us know what what how close to the trees can we get what 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 can these trees withstand when we're going through and putting in the project so they remain healthy after the after the project so um mr nixon and also i just want to make sure any kind of follow-up mr nixon please uh you've got my phone number <laughs> on the card so please feel free to reach <laughs> out to me if you have any additional questions or concerns because again we're, we are doing our best to make sure that we're taking care of everyone <laughs> in this uh let's see so let me know if you have any additional questions on that let's see another next question does manually place get the full double rectangular storm sewer in the middle of the street along with the sewer and water so manderley is going to be a very very challenging and project for the contractor we are the there's already a lot of utilities that are there and the short answer is yes, we are putting a big rectangular storm drain box in Manderley. And right now where the water and sewer are located, they're currently 
in conflict. They're in the way of our storm drain box. So we are going to have to relocate that. And it's it's going to be a fun project for the for the contractor to be sure. But this is also something that is done all the time. So the short answer is yes, and we will be working all that out. Please, I guess, let me know if you have any more questions on that. Let me see the next question here. When will they be on Carolyn Road? Dylan, can you identify? Carolyn Road is going to be this one right here. Hmm. Um, Engineer um, chimed in and said Manderley gets a single box, not double. All right. So that is correct. Okay. It's, let me see. Maybe, perhaps my. Okay. The full double. I'm sorry. I apologize. I did not read that question thoroughly. No, it's not going to get the double box is down there at the very end. We're all there's only a single box that's going to be going down Mandalay Road. I apologize for not being clear on that. Good. So on Carolyn Road, we do not have an exact timing on any of the streets as far as when the construction that will be the contractor's responsibility to determine when based on the crews that he has and the construction that needs to take place. Now then, once we have the pre after the pre-construction meeting, once the contractor puts his schedule together, we will have it at that that time. So we will have another meeting uh, prior to construction. The, the typical meeting is the pre uh, for the residents. There is a pre-construction meeting that we hold. And at that time, the contractor may not have his exact schedule at that time, but he will be working on it and may, depending on the contractor, he may have an idea of when he's going to work on it. Now then, with, with that said, this is an 18-month project. And so we just all have to understand based on rain, based on just how the world is working right now, we've got to just all be prepared for some plans to change. So even if he had a schedule, um, even if he has a schedule at the pre-construction meeting, it is entirely possible that that schedule could change based on the events and that are happening at the time. But what I will say, the most important thing I'm hoping that you guys get is the fact that we have an open line of communication. You have my number. Our goal is to notify you guys um, as we have construction going on and notify you before it directly impacts you. So that's that's going to how we're going to treat that. So but also please ask questions if and contact me if you have any additional questions. Let's see. All right, I guess. Let's see, let's know we will have a pre construction meeting for specific for specific questions. All right, let them know we will have a pre construction meeting for more specific questions. Uh, that is correct. We were going to have a pre-construction meeting. The name person's name is above the comment, not below. So I guess I may be messing that up a little bit. I apologize if I'm I'm giving the wrong, quoting the wrong person as far as a question. Maybe I'll just avoid that to prevent confusion. Let's see here. There is a comment Manderley gets a single box, not a double box. That is, that is correct. It is a single box. Yes, an additional question. I heard statements reflecting plan to be finalized by August, and will that plan be made available to us prior to finalization of the project plan and the commencement of work? We can we can make that plan. Is that I think this is doable. Is I guess my question would be, is this specific to the the outfall is that a lot of this stuff is underground, so I'm assuming that's less less of a concern. But obviously, we want to take need to be taken care of, so we can certainly work to provide everybody with the final plan on the outfall. I will say, as far as that goes, we the outfall might continue a little bit past. August. My goal is to get this and done in August so we can advertise it correctly. But <clears throat> it's, time is a little bit tight, so we're trying to get this that worked out as best we can. But our goal is to 
get everybody as on board with this as we possibly can Let's see next question on here if our driveway is blocked on average how long can we expect to wait before we have access to our driveway that's going to be depend a lot of up to the construction that's going on um i can't give a definitive answer on that i would i just from what my experience on one of the other projects that i had i would say it was no generally no longer than a day um for the paving it's just a few hours is the uh the time that you're kind of blocked from your driveway on the storm drain especially on manderley it's going to be a little bit more challenging because we have the the big box and also the water and sewer that we're doing there too but the goal is going to be as short a time as possible in other words we're not looking to block anybody out for weeks at a time the goal is a day or less is what we're going to shoot for so hopefully that answers your question a little bit we see question is specific regarding the outfall okay so that that's great we'll we'll um we will look to, to try and get everybody um that drawing in our plan prior to it being finalized so you guys get a chance to see what we're what we're doing and what we're proposing so that that is to, that is that is definitely something we can do um let me see will construction start at trail Lake, trail lake or at granbury great uh great question so the storm drain aspect of this will start we always start at the the downstream in and work our way up that's well i should say always that's that's the typically how it is done now then there are because we're doing storm drain water and sewer sometimes contractors have different crews that have different specialties and so it, they could end up working on the sewer and water prior to the storm drain. So again, it will be up to the contractor when he provides us his schedule. We'll have a better idea of what roads will be impacted when. And again, we can share that as we get it. Typically, though, on the storm drain, we do start on the downstream, which that is at trail. So we would start at Trail Lake and work our way up to Granbury Road. See, uh, support what Mike Bennett said about minimizing impact to floodplain modeling of the project indicates that the that by facilitating flow to the creek, it will slightly reduce the water elevation at the outfall during the regulatory regulatory flood event. Also, Mike, uh, I'm not sure. On lock. Okay, so I guess there's just some modeling. I guess. The best way to say that our modeling shows that we are in some ways improving the the, the situation the the short story is it's we are getting water there a little bit quicker and that can help get the water sometimes it's best just to get the water in and out of a small smaller drainage area um it's kind of a little bit technical i if anybody else has any more questions about that i can do my best to answer that's getting a little bit more technical let me see there's something at 628 sounds like i missed but karen i understand i'm not seeing a on my computer it's not logging at 628 uh so i'm gonna score okay see if i can get this manually six she's great who asked that question about the aesthetics and outflow of water okay there's name above comment not below all right there might be a question out there that I missed that I'm just not seeing. So if there's anybody out there that did post a question, I apologize. Could you repost it? Because I'm just not finding the one. Mike, I don't think you answered all the questions I see. Which, okay. Maybe there are some questions that are not coming through on my computer. What can Dylan, can you? No, I, I said I think you did answer. Oh, you think it. I did? Okay. Okay. I, I don't see it. Oh. I don't see the questions were unanswered. Um, it's a question. Sure. Okay, hold on. Okay, I get it. Okay, yes. An additional question. I heard statements reflecting a plan to assure 
a natural look for the outfall is that plan part of the plan to be finalized by august and will that plan be avail made available to us prior to the finalization of the project plan and the commencement of work yes ma'am that that is our that is our goal one thing that must occur because we have one of the things i need to point out here for stormwater we have to make a balance. there's a balance that we must reach one of course is we our goal we do have a desire and regardless of the drainage i mean our desire is to bring it back to a natural uh state now then with that said we have to balance that against the ability to maintain the channel so we work the our, our team is the capital delivery team we we work to deliver projects but we also have a team that maintains the projects that we that we build and construct and that that team does get a say in what what we do so we have we are setting up a meeting with our team that maintains the, the channels to see what we can do to make sure that we are bringing it as close to a natural state as we can but also such that they can maintain it in a safe safe manner so once we have that meeting we, we're going to get back and we'll we'll show that plan and get get comments on that so hopefully that and yes the goal the goal will be to have that figured out prior to the end of august and if it doesn't we're not gonna we're not gonna say up oh, we're done we're moving on that's that's not our goal our goal is to get get this as best right as best we can uh so you can bit bit more detail on the sewer line on Corto and Suffolk. Okay. I guess help me understand a little bit more of the detail. There's a, I guess, contractors, when we're, they're working on this uh, trenchless met method, they, they dig up uh, on one side and, or actually dig up on both sides. And they, in essence, run a pipe through the existing pipe and it's it's just a replacement of the existing pipe that's there it expands out a little bit of the uh internal and then but of course once you do that you have your services that have been disrupted because of this this method and the contractor must go into those yards and dig up those services and make sure they're they're reconnected i'm not is there something something more that you're looking at looking for me to add to that i guess okay what if okay what if that affects the fence okay so that that's an one of the things the contractor is put on the contractor we are to re replace make anything equal or better so if a fence is impacted we are to go back and fix the fence and sometimes that means replacing you know the wood fence but it's replaced in kind so that is on the contractor's responsibility they've got to fix any grass that they disturb or anything in the yard they they disturb the contractor is responsible for getting it back to the condition it was before they showed up uh uh not a lot of digging i guess that's that, that can be a relative term so i want to be ca cautious there they uh the goal is to minimize the digging um a lot of that depends on how deep the sewer line is the deeper the sewer line the uh deeper the, the bigger the hole can get the other thing to note is how accurate with the con contractor does he he does a a videotape of the sewer line in order to figure out where those services are so that they're they're getting technology is getting pretty good so we're able to find it relatively quick but of course that is that also gives a little bit of uh there's an there can be a little bit of air in there so they that can help cause them to big, dig a little bit more than they might want to 
but overall they're 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 pretty good at minimizing uh what they're digging up and it's it costs them money if they end up digging up more than they should so they have an incentive not to especially since they need to bring it bring the property back to the way it was or better uh let's see i have a friend who lives on anita avenue she's completely surrounded by the work will i always be able to get to her house either by coming from suffolk or from south winfield the goal will be yes to make sure that you can get to the house from one direction or the other now again when you've got the i guess the train of excavators and they're digging the hole again while that's moving along you might have to adjust your drive patterns from one side to the other because this is a, the streets are pretty tight it's about 28 feet the the excavator it they're they're about 15 feet wide and so you're not really able to drive past them on um it's just not safe and on the sewer and water those are typically on one side of the street or the other and so that sometimes you can there but on the storm drain that's typically in the center and it's going to be in the center a lot of this roadway and when those excavators are in the so uh, center of the road you're not getting around them so you'll have to go around the other side but the short answer is yes you're going to be able to get to the house from one side or the other uh, let me see does that mean you are staying with the original eight inch sewer in the street and putting a not slightly yet. smaller pipe inside it uh okay if it's in the street we're actually digging up the street we don't the uh the trenchless method is a little bit more it, it was a bit more expensive than just uh, you know digging it up and so anytime that we're digging it up the uh it, we are going back with an eight inch the the trenchless method the diameter i'm not exactly sure what sometimes it's a little bit smaller Sometimes it's equal size. It depends on the method. In the end, it's not no one's service is going to be impacted based on us going through there and putting in the new line. This is the, the ones in the back of the houses. There's not a lot of it doesn't receive a lot of houses. There's not a lot of houses on it to begin with. So we're not we're not going to put those things. Uh, they're not going to be overworked. The, the eight inch lines can take a lot lot of a lot of sewage so that that should not be a concern uh we see with regard to outfall you seem to be saying there will be a dramatic increase in water flow due to bo due to the bottling effect requiring a much larger box culvert comments above seem to say water elevation will be reduced note today's elevation is six inches is the water anticipated to be larger flow or not so this gets a little bit more into the the hydraulics of the of the project and so there is it can be a little bit of a <laughs> tricky tricky <laughs> thing. Uh, see the one way to say that is there's a the creek itself when when we do our modeling we it's a hundred year the hundred year is basically the standard in which we look at a lot of the we look at the constraints in the model <laughs> and on the, the the creek it's receiving a lot of water from a lot of a large area and that can be a bottleneck and so we've got a smaller drainage basin compared to the what's already flowing in the overton creek and so the way you look at it is our water gets out prior to the peak in the larger creek getting there. So it's the end story is when we do the models, it's not the the it's the water surface elevation is not raised. It's not higher than it is today. That that's the short answer, it is, and it's due to it's due to the peaks. When does the when does the water in the creek? What time does that reach its peak compared to what time does our storm drain system have reach its peak? Its most amount of water getting there. Those peaks are not at the same time. So that it's 
that's I'm sorry if that's not um, super clear, but that's that's kind of the best way I have to explain explain that. It's again, it's not that there's any more water getting to this location. It just happens to be getting there a little bit faster. And as far as the the timing and the routing method that helps us out because it's getting in and out of that that channel faster than it did did before. Um, see, on our block on Manderley and Suffolk, the sanitary sewer runs along the rear property line. So does that mean each? house now draining to the rear will drain to a new line in the streets yes on uh, manderley if it is currently in the back and it's we're moving it to the front then yes you will we will our goal is to move it to the front so folks make sure this well oh we're not no i'm sorry i'm Manderley and Suffolk, we're just having to, I'm sorry, those those are being relocated due due to the 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 storm drain project. And so we're only relocating those lines for, from one side of the street, one part of the street into a slightly different location in order to make room for the storm drain. So along Suffolk and Manderley, no, we're not changing the location of the sewer services for those properties. All right, we seem to be out of questions in the chat. I thought we were getting rid of the rear sewer lines, but we're not. He just said, I'm it, sorry, and he's corrected himself a lot. I know. Oh, no. So, let me see. We do have a couple callers. I've unmuted call in user three. Is there a, let me see if there's any other callers. Is there any question that's questions of the caller and caller three might have that we've not addressed yet? Okay. Not hearing anything there. Say back to the chat. Say, uh, let me see. With regard to the outfall, you seem to be saying earlier. Okay, on our block on Manderley and Suffolk. Let's see. Okay, no, I already answered that. That's probably me, Mike. I think I'm the uh, only other caller. Okay. Uh, let me see. Okay. So. I, I don't see any new questions, Mike. I think you answered everything. That's okay. in the chat. I guess, Jeff, Mr. Communications man, do you have anything that you want to add to the meeting? Any other thoughts? Considering this is our first attempt at a public meeting via, via the WebEx. Well, this this is our first uh, WebEx meeting, so um, hopefully we answered everyone's questions. Uh, as Mike said at the beginning, uh, we are going to. It is being recorded, uh, and it will be posted uh, on the City of Fort Worth website on the project page. Uh, if you want to refer back to any of the plans or any uh, questions that came up. Oh, Mike, there is one additional question that just came in about holding future meetings in person. Okay, so 
That will all depend on how the world and the U.S. shakes out and our state shakes out and our, I guess, Fort Worth state shakes out with the COVID response and how, how are things doing? I don't believe, Jeff, I don't know if anybody's brought any in-person meetings. Uh, there have no, I don't believe we've had any discussions on that yet, correct? Uh, no. Correct. We don't. Uh, we have WebEx meetings scheduled at least through August. Uh, at this point, um, obviously, our preference is to always have an in-person meeting if we can. Yeah. Uh, we we like the interaction a lot better, and we can have larger displays for people to see. But uh, uh, we don't have a time frame on when uh, in-person meetings will begin again at, quite yet. Okay. And there are the phone numbers and email addresses for both of us if in case anybody needs to see that one more time. Yes, and honestly, please reach out. The The best way for us to have a, a project that, you know, benefits all and everybody agrees with is if we hear back. Um, it's already always the most difficult thing is when we hear after the project what we could have done. Um, it's, it's a lot harder to correct things once you hear it after it's done. So that's the purpose of this is to get the input while we while we're still have the opportunity to make changes and adjust adjust. So please reach out and I know we we fully understand this outfall is a, uh, is, a is a big issue. So we're going to do our best to get everybody on board with this as best as as best as we can. So I guess please be patient and but just keep continue to reach out to us and we thank you. Thank you for your time. And with that, I'm going to stop the recording and we'll uh, get posted.